This program contains material of a disturbing nature. Viewer discretion is advised. Louise says he wants to take a hot shower to ease his pain. But then, Dan watches as his brother's condition takes another bizarre turn. On his way into the bathroom, Louise vomits on himself. And then he proceeded to get even more ill. He threw up three, maybe four times. So I go to check on him, and then he just collapsed. It was unresponsive. We don't know what's wrong with them, and we didn't know what to do. My dad and decided, you know, let's take him to the hospital. Dan and his father pick Louise up and take him to the nearest emergency room. I was panicked. I had no idea what to expect. When Dan told me that his brother had collapsed, I, I felt, you know, my heart in my throat. I was scared. At the hospital, Dan watches helplessly as Louise fades in and out of consciousness. He woke up for just like a little bit. He was kind of talking in a way that, that didn't make a lot of sense. His, his words were garbled. The emergency room staff's first thought is that the young man might have overdosed. But a toxicology screen of Louise's blood finds no drugs in his system. leaves the medical staff concerned that he could be suffering from a serious neurological condition. So they order an x-ray of his skull. They found that he had an immense amount of pressure built up in his head. They said it was around three times more than a normal person has. Luis's doctors say the compression is being caused by a condition called hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is a buildup of cerebral fluid in the brain. The mounting pressure cuts off blood flow and can be caused by traumatic head injury, infection, or tumors. But the source of Louise's condition is still a mystery. With Louise in critical condition, his case is taken over by neurologist Dr. Soren Single. When I first saw Louise, he was close to being dead from brain herniation. Dr. Single has an idea about what might be causing Louise's hydrocephalus. The suspicion was that there was an obstruction somewhere along the path of that cerebrospinal fluid. To confirm his theory, a CT scan is ordered. There was a small, bright object at the site where the cerebrospinal fluid usually leaves the center of the brain to go down to the brain stem. An obstruction of this part of the brain is often a tumor. In order to take a closer look at the object, Dr. Single uses an MRI, and the results are distressing. The MRI scan of Louise's brain showed a cyst, a water-filled structure which had the shape of a snowman. And inside that cyst, we saw a tapeworm. The pork tapeworm, also known as Tinea sullium, infects both humans and pigs. Inside Louise's brain, the tapeworm sits in a protective cyst. As it grows, the cyst blocks the flow of fluid around the brain, causing a buildup in pressure and leading to Louise's crippling headaches, confusion, and loss of consciousness. I was completely shocked that he would have a tapeworm in his, in his brain. I mean, who actually ever expects that? This is not something that occurs on a daily basis. So it is definitely one of those situations that are the most unexpected reality or real moments that you're ever going to experience. Most people associate tapeworms with the intestines, but tapeworm larvae can also get into the bloodstream. And when that happens, the larvae protect themselves from the immune system by encasing their bodies in a hard, impenetrable cyst. Sometimes those cysts find their way into the brain, where they become lodged in cerebral tissue, causing seizures, paralysis, and even death. And then Dr. Single has even more bad news for the family. Since the tapeworm is located in the center of Louise's brain, 
removing it could kill him. One has to be very careful not to rupture the cyst, which could then dislodge the tapeworm. Once the worm escapes, there will be no way to retrieve that worm, and it may actually take the patient's life, ultimately. That's not something you want. Not for the, the bratty kid brother that you love to death, that you pick on, that you look out for, that you literally protect like he's yours. A few hours later, Dr. Single begins the risky procedure. The tool we use is a neuroendoscope, which is a camera and a small forceps on a very small but very long tubular instrument. I advance the camera and the working tools through the skin, through the skull bone, and into the center of the brain. Dr. Single slowly moves the endoscope towards the cyst, conscious that one wrong move could end Louise's life. I then utilized small forceps to work the cyst away from the brain structures. Once I had trapped the cyst against the endoscope, I carefully removed the endoscope while holding on to the cyst. The endoscope came out of the brain in one piece without breaking the cyst. It was just the best possible situation to the worst possible situation in the world. And I'm really thankful that it turned out the way it did. The next day, Louise's cranial pressure has subsided, and doctors are able to bring him out of the coma. When he woke up, it was like every Christmas you've had from the time you were born all compiled into one moment. I remember waking up not knowing what was going on. They told me what happened and how it came about, and I was just kind of surprised that a tapeworm was lodged in my brain. And by the time they found out, I was probably like 30 minutes away from dying. Most people contract a tapeworm after eating raw or undercooked pork, but there's another way to get one. When an adult tapeworm reaches maturity in the intestine, it begins to lay eggs which are shed through the feces. If an infected person uses the toilet and doesn't properly wash their hands, they can spread tapeworm eggs to everything they touch, including food. They told me I could have got the tapeworm from eating unwashed fruits or, sa or a salad I ate that wasn't properly washed. Today, Louise is grateful to be alive and for the support of his loved ones. I'm really lucky. I had a room full of my family every single night I was at the hospital. There was not one day that the room was empty. Even though my brother doesn't like it, every time I see him now, I walk up and give him a hug. He may fight it, he may act grumpy, but I think somewhere down inside, he kind of enjoys me giving him a hug. <laughs>